Hey, they was longer. It was 24 hours. 11 a.m., be there. You won't want to miss it. Organize for revolution, forward ever, backwards never. We're not going to ask for housing. We're going to take it. Stay strong. 35%. There are over 833 families with children that experience homelessness on every given night in Portland. And there are far too few services and streams of affordable housing to make sure that each of these families is safe and secure at the night. Our organization keeps a wait list of families that want to get into shelter that is consistently between 20 and 30 families long. Last winter at our family emergency winter shelter, our capacity was 60 people per night, but almost every single night throughout the winter we saw people of numbers of 90 to 100. And, most, and all of those people were members of families with children experiencing homelessness. The situation of families who are homeless is an increasingly dire situation because these are families that have small children that are being forced to miss meals, sleep in unsafe conditions, and lack the stability that children need to thrive. The increase in Multnomah County's homeless population can be attributed to the unprecedented economic challenges that we have faced in our region and nationally over the past few years. The Portland Metro region has been among the worst hit by the recession, with record unemployment rates and per capita incomes that trail the national average. Unemployment is one of the primary reasons for family homelessness, and the recession has made it harder to find and retain adequate work. Despite declining incomes, the cost of housing in the region has increased in recent years, making it more difficult for low-income residents to afford market rate rent. According to a recently released national report, a minimum wage worker in Montgomery County would need to work 82 hours per week or earn $17.40 an hour in a full-time job to afford a two-bedroom apartment in Portland. 49% of Multnomah County's renter households pay more than 30% of their gross income towards rent, mortgage, and utilities. Any crisis, from a medical emergency to job loss, can put a household with this level of rent burden at risk of homelessness. The high housing costs also make it extremely difficult for households already experiencing homelessness to transition off the street. At Portland Homeless Family Solutions, we accomplish our mission by operating two shelters the Goose Hollow Family Shelter, and the 13 Family Family Center. We house eight families experiencing homelessness each night, and we teach life skills classes like parenting, social relationships, rent wealth, budgeting, and many others. Additionally, each of our families works with a housing specialist to try to find permanent housing to create self-sufficiency and guide them to true sustainability. Over the past year, we have helped 88% of the families that walk through our door move into permanent housing. We house more than one family per week, and we have we make sure that over 300 members of families with children have safe, secure places to sleep each night. Cameron Wilson has been volunteering at our shelters for over four years, and we are so proud of the work that he has been doing over the past year and the message that he brings to our community. volunteering at one of the local family shelters or donating coats, money, clothing, and bedding. Also, learn more about the issues of homelessness and affordable housing. It truly takes a village to help our society's most vulnerable citizens. And it's going to take work from each and every single person at this rally, as well as from the larger community as a whole. I challenge each of you to use Cameron's hunger strike as inspiration in your own lives to bring the issues of homelessness and affordable housing to the forefront of our community. Talk about these issues with your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, and your relatives. Call your legislators on the local and national level and encourage them to advocate on behalf of more affordable housing and money to support our local safety net programs. Our city is experiencing a crisis right now by letting our most vulnerable citizens fall through the cracks. Let's put an end to this injustice by pooling our collective resources and our voices and making it known that we will not stand for homelessness in Portland. Except for the very rich, people from all walks of life are losing their jobs, losing their homes, losing their hope. It's happening in every state of our union, 
and it's happening here in Portland. Cameron has been out in front of City Hall for 50 days, withstanding the elements and refusing food in order to draw attention to this crisis we all feel. Some say that Cameron is a fool. He's being unreasonable by expecting to change city policies by undergoing this fast. And to this I say, yes, it may indeed be unreasonable, but it is absolutely necessary. Why is it necessary? Because the issues we're facing are much bigger than Cameron Whitman. The issues we are facing are much bigger than Portland, or Oregon, or even the USA. What do I mean? Let me answer that with a few questions. Is it reasonable that all our good jobs are being outsourced to other countries? Is it reasonable that the few jobs that remain are the low-paying ones? Is it reasonable that our small and local businesses are being undercut by big box stores? What about this? Is it reasonable that students have to go into a lifetime of debt just to get an education? Is it reasonable that they can trick people into losing their homes? And now, go to the home, to the issues Cameron is hoping to remedy. Is it reasonable that people who've lost their homes have to hide in the shadow where it's dirty and dangerous? No! No! Is it reasonable to expect people who are hurting or homeless to simply vanish from our sight? No! Is it reasonable to expect us to tolerate this madness. Oh! And so, when we hear that Cameron Whitney isn't being reasonable, it makes me stop and wonder about how reasonable we are being. If we tolerate all the horrific things unfolding in this country, if we see our future evaporating before our very eyes, is it reasonable for Cameron to put his body on the line to Stop this madness? Right. Cameron is showing us all what must be done. Collectively, we must say no to the madness and yes to peaceful resistance. And that's what Cameron's doing. He's using his one small and shrinking body to say no to the madness. Like many of you, I'm worried about Cameron's health. But unlike you, I think we've got some celebrating to do today. Cameron has showed us what one person with a good solid base of supporters can do. Cameron has also nurtured my faith that Portland will lead the nation in saying no to unchecked greed. And so I want to close by asking me one question. You may be surprised to hear me to ask you, but can you tell me what democracy looks like?
They are hoping that these irritating political activists will get tired and stay away. But they're wrong. They have no vision. City Council, like our American Congress, is living in an old system that will not carry us into the future. Shelter is a right. Shelter is a right. Being able to put a tent up over your head in the poor weather is a human right. Using your private property in a non-useful manner to support other human beings is a right. Your first service is to the people. I'm really saddened by the lack of dialogue, creativity, or vision that City Council has presented to Cameron in his 50 days of walking his talk. When you are a public servant, you are obligated to enter into the conversation. When you are a public servant, you are responsible to the people, for the people. Even though you may not have a lot to do. Public servant means just that. Serving the public. The graduation of Cameron and walking with Hawkman on 50 days of holy Uh, 
the hard part is every day that I'm taking like, is my goal of five days, a week, two days without food. It's not easy, but I would just like to share that, you know, it is possible to, you know, round down the support to people that uh, actually need the support. Um, if you guys want to talk to me a little bit more about um, the experience, I'm willing to share, I'm willing to share if you want to pull me aside, I can do that, thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Hill. Thanks for being here today. Hey, I think first of all, before I even start speaking, uh, I want to say that my colleague and friend Jefferson Smith is here. You're going to hear from him in a minute. I think it's great that the two people that are running for mayor in the city, me and my colleague Jefferson, are both here in solidarity with you. And that's great. Good to have you here. And you've heard from a lot of great speakers and we have more coming, so I just want to say three things. I want to give a shout out in love, and I want to give a shout out in praise, and I want to call to action. First, in love. Cameron, you have a lot of people in this community that care about you and love you. And we want you to be strong and healthy and a warrior for a good call of you like this and for a long time. So, take care of yourself so you can take care of others. Yep. Please, for all of us to care about you. We care about this guy, don't we? Yeah. Secondly, I'm going to talk about how we can do better. But I want to praise good work. We've heard from some nonprofits here already today that are doing great things. And there are others. There's Outside In. There's Join. There's Care. There's Sisters of the Road. There's a bus park time. There's a lot of good work being done in this community by people that, that work hard and care. And we should say thank you to them. So thanks for good work so far. I've not done that, but thank you for good work so far. And then finally, what we're doing here today, and it needs to be done, is constantly call our community to action. 1,700 people will sleep on the streets of Portland tonight. Can we do better than that? Must we do better than that? Will we do better than that? Thank you. With your help, we will. Thanks very much. It may not be a permanent solution, 
Wilson. But as you see us here, along 4th Avenue, then sitting in the light, where you see, instead of being separated, we go to the side like cockroaches, to the crack alley. These are families, these are human beings. We're going to be out there, and you as a community can help us. You can come in if you see it's messy. Help us because those are wet blankets that's why it's messy. Dirty parts with messy. Help us. OccupyPortland.org has a button on the left that says digital. So it takes to a replay page, which is also an information page. We can watch our David Love video about the vigil, about Cameron, about this demonstration. You can, you can find email, you can find Vigil TV. Vigil TV is where I interview people who are helpers and people standing by their side. And you can hear for yourself how close we are as individuals. How two heads get to lay and some bad luck to just land you right into the street. People who have gotten homeless because they tried to go to school and financially made a mistake. Just imagine that. So, these cars here are what we have been using in storage to park. But the community is helping us with blanket washing. We are providing food and we're taking care of one another. And we demand that right until the city can do something. This is an emergency measure. That's what this is, emergency relief. But it's a community solution. And so when Cameron Whitten talks about the stakeholders being at the table, it doesn't take $400,000 to make one unit of housing. Where's that money going? Well, it's not going to happen if you have houseless people who are making these decisions about how many to spend. There's going to be no more waste. This has got to stop now. So City Hall admits its failure and allow us to work as a community. Theater, I mean, for a movie shoot. We get parking spaces for dumpsters for businesses. This is a monument. This is our freedom of speech. We want one parking space. Oh, yeah. And we're going to feed and give blankets. But don't forget, these are demonstrators standing up for their own rights, taking care of themselves, showing city all how it's done. And we need your help. OccupyPortland.org, the visual button. Thank you, Cameron Whitten. First of all, uh, we the people in the United States and all its territory. <laughs> My name is Jerry at Ryan TV. If you don't know me, you can get on email. We send out thousands of emails for the last three years fighting one major problem. 21st century policing in a capsule is kill at will with us without due cost. <laughs> this is the only state in the nation with a law that changes not only policing as we know it today, but for the future. I will tell appointed. I am the founder and the third person for a group of a long name we call United States Police slash Oregon State Police Independent Citizen a law with the title of Senate Bill 111, police use of deadly physical force. We have a five master plan. One of them, right on the head of it, to make you understand the depth of it, in, when this goes into use, which it has now only because of the very top police officials, not just here in Oregon, but federal, in Washington, D.C., and picture this, a James Cassie senior setting, where an officer starts to beat and kick to death 
of a strange person, our law says you, a police officer must stop immediately, arrest that officer, and let him go to prison by a federal jury, a full jury, not a grand jury, because a grand jury is only grand for police officers. We have four other aspects of it for accountability. Our organization will monitor the training. There is not one other. Anything like that in the nation where it actually has specific procedures. It has specific training that we're going to monitor. We have five members in the group and three on reserve. If you want to get on the street to help out, all you have to do is two things. One is contact the police chief there that called Sully Hayes just told me five minutes ago that he, he completely supports our program and he will fire the police chief brief if he does not put that program in the air. Listen please on his competition, Jefferson Smith comes up here to talk today in a few moments. If he does not say the same thing that Charlie Hayes does, you know who the next player should be. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. My right is the young man who is putting himself. He's doing it for a cause that is deeply important, a moral tragedy that goes beyond the borders of our city. And I hope that the people who are here are not using this as an opportunity, misusing it as an opportunity. Because I think he ought to eat. I listen to the whole time. And you can yell at me all you like. And you can yell at me all you like. You can shout me down if you like, but I can get to the odd one show. And I decided to do it because I think there's important things to say, and I think there are important things to hear, even from a politician. But, we have four kids who are shooting. In the last five nights in our town, we had 12 people killed last night in Colorado. We have deep problems in this country. Deeper than I think any of us are willing to acknowledge, and deeper than any of us will be able to accomplish today. And I will hold the police department accountable. And I will make sure we come up with emergency strategies to address people who are helping. And I will look to raise revenue for projects that we have. And I will preserve the fees that we have even when people are more powerful than any of the six people who have yelled over the last five minutes asked me to cut those fees. And I will fight so that we do something about the widest wealth disparities in this country we've had in four countries. But we've got to do something way deeper. And I want to point something to somebody who you ought to be listening to more than you listen to me. And you ought to go to your computer and Google a guy named Richard Wilkinson. I don't even think he's from this country, but he gave a talk about what's happening in the world around wealth disparity and comparing nations based on income inequality. And if you compare nations, if you want to, be, if you want to improve crime rates, if you want to improve homelessness, and by that I mean make it last, if you want to improve economic opportunity and you're an undeveloped nation, the best thing the nation can do is become a developed one. But if you are a developed nation and you want to make crime and homelessness and heart attack and poverty a little bit better, a little bit less tragic, the best thing you can do is not become more developed. The best thing you can do is become more equal. The best thing you can do is improve income equality. And if we're wondering why there are people sleeping in places because they don't have anywhere else, 
and they're wondering why we have people shooting each other. And they ought to be shooting each other. You don't need to look too much further to understand that we are dealing with a global and national problem. But if we don't deal with it in our entire lives, we won't be big enough to deal with it. But let me say something else. I want to talk to the people who aren't yelling and the people who are. And I want to figure out what our ratio is of yelling to voting. Because I was talking to my friend, Teresa Rayford, who was telling me, you know what? Jeff, you're big enough. You should carry Cameron out of here and bring him to a hotel to get him something to eat. Because the people here who care the most will vote police. And so what I'm asking you is if you care, don't vote for me. Charlie, see your guy too. What I ask you is to dedicate more deeply, more deeply than a single rally, more deeply than a sign, more deeply than somebody who's gone 50 days without eating solid food. We want the money back. And the last thing I want to say. And I know the easiest thing for me to do is come and say, I, I, I can get a fog lines. I know how to do that. I just think we need to work a little harder and think a little deeper. And what I like to do is give a round of applause to the people who are working really hard. And thank you for listening for a second. And even thanks to the people who are yelling. Okay. Well, we just have some things out to you that are little pieces of paper, and that's the course. And he's going to teach you how to sing that right now so you can join in with him. one thing to those three guys that were out in blue. I guess they called the police. 
they the real reason why Muslims don't eat pork. Yeah. Big, 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 and we big. all out here are 99ers, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know that 99% of the people on the street are American people living in this country. 99% of the people that live in their houses are American people living in this country. 99% of the people that don't have work are, from, are living in this country. 99% of the people that are homeless are living on the street without food, water, a place to shit, a place to shower, a place to shave, a place to eat, a place to sleep safe, a place to get good clothing, a place where they have to be with them, a place where their family can be with them, because we are the 99 percenters, we can do something. And if you're not fighting for your rights, you are a city team. <laughs> been out here for 50 days to bring attention to everybody what this city is doing to them, what this city is doing to you, to somebody's mother, to somebody's brother, to somebody's nephew, to somebody's uncle. There's enough vacant houses out here where we can fix up and put people in. They even have the a van where people can put park their cars in church lots and communities don't want that. Tell me, what do you want? As the man was speaking earlier, they swept under three bridges money. And I went under there to see people. It was a ghost town. Nobody there. Where did they go? I want to put this warning out that all you who live in neighborhoods, residential areas, homeless, coming to a neighborhood near you. <laughs> What must we do? Must we watch Cameron starve himself? Must we watch this one man speak up for us? We must stand together. We must evolve. And take us up, take our land back. Take our streets back. Take our cities back. Because these people are supposed to be suddenly served. They're supposed to listen to us. Because in the Constitution, it says we the people, not we the citizens. We must fight for our rights. We must speak out. We must join camera in solidarity. At 12 o'clock tonight, I'll be going on my rumble downstairs for 30 days, and I will be in solidarity with camera. I just want to thank you all because of you for staying here and letting me do all this by myself, where people I know would take a federal stance from doing drugs in the street, drinking in the street, and fighting for their own rights. You are a city queen. And my intention in lighting that candle was that this candle was not going to go out until the situation over here changed. Because it's, it's not a matter of semantics. The situation is that your sleeping bag is illegal. Your tarp is illegal. That's camping equipment. And within the city limits, that is prohibited camping. God forbid that you have a storage tub or a pallet to sleep on because that's a structure. And like me, you will be cited for erecting a structure in public property, in public space without a permit. So we have a court case going on right now. Uh, August 23rd is my court date. And uh, I was sleeping on a pallet over here at City Hall on a rainy, cold night. And they cited me for sleeping on a pallet. They said I was erecting a structure. So the way that the laws are written, these structures, like the one I was sleeping on, and the sleeping bags that I was sleeping in are completely illegal. So anyway, when I lit that candle, my intention was that we're not going away until this injustice is remedied. We are not going away. And that's the message that we have for City Hall, is that we're not going away. We're not going away. You can fight us. You can cite us for structures. You can cite us for leaving our property on the sidewalk for more than two hours. You can cite us for all that stupid bullshit that you try to pull. And you know what? We're not going away. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really simple. You know, we're going to focus our energy here because the argument is so simple. The argument is that the right to safe 
warm, dry sleep is fundamental to mental health and community health. And so we can guarantee that every person that's visiting this town has the right to safe, warm, dry sleep. We are not going to go away. I would like to, uh, for the next 30 or 60 seconds, on March 24th, we had a rally for the homeless, and we all held hands. We had a moment of silence. I would really like it if you would reach out to the hand of your neighbor right now and that we would just bring the volume down, bring it the intention up. All right? Because this is where our power is. This is the spiritual revolution we're in. I don't give a shit what you believe in because all that stuff is really powerful. So believe in what you believe in. Grab the hand of your neighbor. Let's have 30 seconds of silence for intention, please. are not going away. There is a coldness in the heart of our society. As the highest tier of Americans continue to profit, the, grasp, the gap of inequality widens, and invaluable lives are deprived of the basic essentials for survival. Some may think that a hunger strike is a dangerous and effective tactic to address this crisis. Some may think that it is not enough, or even in the world's most prosperous nation, every 53 minutes an American child dies due to poverty. How many more are we willing to let die before we act? The theory of housing first states that providing a stable place to sleep significantly enables a person to find employment, recover from substance abuse, refrain from violence and crime, and seek mental health counseling at a lower cost to government. In a progressive and thriving city such as ours, if we were able to adopt such a powerful resolution, we would be more successful in the first place in combating systemic poverty rather than using our police force to sweep vulnerable human beings from the bridge to doorway to jail cells. The incident of protest has three distinct goals. So far, advancement with the city has appeared a little bleak. If you pay close attention, you can see a subtle change in our approach on the issue. I'd like to thank the mayor and city council for the responsiveness, their advocacy, and their endless work behind the scenes to address our general welfare. We have their attention and are beginning to broaden their policy to deal with this housing crisis. We are close to a victory. Now it is time for the citizenry to do their part. This could be a summer of memory where more of us We'll turn off our TV, cancel our trips to the beach, spend time away from the bar, and start being awake. I strongly encourage the students, workers, the unemployed poor, those left in endless debt, and all others look at being left the middle class to participate in our day of economic justice. August 10th will be an observance of the 70th day of my hunger strike and the day the United States Declaration of Independence first reached to London. Beginning right here, we will host a rally, march, potluck, dance party, and slumber party. There is so much visibility for this great cause right now. The whole world is watching. Now is the time for unity not to divide amongst ourselves. I can see the light inside every single one of you right now. Never surrender that power. Thank you. Yeah.